Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Yeah, break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, institutions withdraw a massive amount of Bitcoin from Coinbase, moving it to cold storage. So what does this mean for the entire cryptocurrency market? All I can say is it's bullish. On top of that, IOHK, the development arm of Cardano, introduces new programming language Glow. So what does it mean for Cardano? Well, it's gonna make things a lot easier. And what that means when things are easier, mass adoption. And to follow up, we're gonna take a look at Ethereum update Berlin hard fork, ETH 2.0 beacon chain, and uh, what is going on as far as the upgrades for Ethereum. So we'll go over those three stories, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, it's Saturday morning. It is uh, February 27th, uh, 9 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. We just uh, got done with a live stream where we did uh, a portfolio review of three subscribers and a really uh, ending good story. So if you have time, go ahead and check that out. I'll link it at the very end of this video. It was just interesting to see that uh, it doesn't matter how much you have. All you got to do really, and again, not financial advice is the things that I would do, is that I don't have to have 20 winners. I just got to have a couple of winners, a couple of okays, a couple of meh, and then maybe some bombs. That's all right, because those big winners are going to overshadow uh, what's going to happen with the losers. And you're going to see that pretty clearly in the uh, portfolio review. Anyhow, so this is what we got that is going on today in the cryptocurrency market. Pretty good day, right? Uh, Bitcoin hasn't fallen to 25,000 like some people said it was going to happen to, sticking around the 46 number. I'm happy with that. And, uh, you know, just fluctuating about a 1%. So, eh, whatever. Ethereum uh, down a little bit, uh, 4%. And in my opinion, is kind of, is I think it's massively underperforming, honestly. I know some people say, well, it went from 700 to 1400 and it doubled and da, da, da. Yeah, that's true, it did. But I mean, look at what's going on with all the other ones. I mean, if you can just take a look at like Polkadot and Chainlink, they're going up massively, not to mention Voyager, which is 29 cents, now it's six bucks. So, I mean, uh, it is hard when you have these uh, larger cap uh, cryptos. But uh, again, we're looking at uh, bear sentiment uh, for Bitcoin, Ethereum. Uh, Cardano is one of the big winners today at 20%, and that's huge. And we talked about this yesterday, uh, video where we talked about the Mary hard fork, which is going to, you know, rush, uh, usher in the Gogan era with smart contracts. But on top of that, uh, you're going to have, uh, decentralized finance and native tokens. So remember that whole big craze as far as ICOs in 2017, because everything was built on Ethereum? Well, now you can do that on uh, Cardano. And uh, they're also doing that ERC20 converter, which means you can take any project that is on Ethereum, just zip it on over to Cardano, and uh, it's a lot cheaper and faster. So what do you think is going to happen? I'm not sure, but uh, I own a lot of Cardano. I also own a lot of Ethereum. So not financial advice, just saying uh, you might want to look into those. Tether's Tether. Nobody cares unless you're a New York Attorney General. <laughs> Binance Coin still doing okay, but not too bad. Uh, Polkadot up. Uh, what else? 13% for Stellar. I think there's been more, more talk about more stable coins migrating onto the Stellar network. So that's big. Uh, NEM's a little bit up. Cosmos, interoperability, a big factor. We need that uh, desperately. So that looks pretty good. And then IOTA up 3%. We just had a uh, an interview with Dom from IOTA. They're doing pretty great things over there. And I'm going to take a deeper dive over at danteachescrypto.com just to take a look at uh, what they're doing and see if it's something to invest into. So, all right. So we've got that. Let's see what could be a potential big winner by using the trade the chain, uh, the projected range, which is really good 90% accuracy uh, for the next hour. So Right now, uh, this middle number here, this 5% for uh, Talos, which has been on a tear lately. We talked about this. This thing is the third time we talked about this. Um, it's a 90% accuracy to go to 5% or even 20%. Now, I'm not sure that's what's going to happen. How Trade the Chain works is it uh, scrapes data from all the different uh, websites and blog posts, has a direct integration into uh, Twitter to get an analysis. This is what they see. Uh, you trust Verge. I would not touch Verge. I just, that is, don't like it. Genesis, Kava, like these are most things I've never heard of. Unibright, uh, potentially 2% in the next hour. Decentraland, ooh, nice. So if you want to check it out, the link's in the description. It's just interesting to see like all the different projects that are that could potentially be big that uh, are just kind of hidden. Like I don't know about them. I don't know if you know about them, but uh, just kind of trying to bring those to light and maybe do your own research so you can really delve into it and see what's the next big thing. All right, so let's uh, jump into today's top story. I'm going to make these quick because, I mean, they're good, but we don't need to do a ton of information. First of all, uh, institutions withdraw massive amount of Bitcoin from Coinbase, 
moving it to cold storage. So here's what we got. Uh, this was a, uh, a pretty good information from Key Young. He is the, uh, uh, oh, here he is, crypto quant an analyst. That's what he's from. Uh, so he talks about on Friday, there was a whopping $13,000 Bitcoin was acquired and moved from the largest U.S. digital exchange, Coinbase, which is true. Uh, Coinbase is the, is the largest, most expensive for sometimes, but uh, yeah, it's the biggest. Anyhow, he talks about Bitcoins were purchased by U.S. financial institutions. They're accumulating Bitcoin as it is trading in a correction. Let me just tell you this. Every time there's a huge correction, I always think it's a manipulation. And I always think it's so the big guys can get their grubby hands uh, from it. And uh, because I, because they were like, hey, guess what? If I can get my hands on this then at a cheaper price, this would be great. So if we manipulate a little bit, um, that's good for us. I'm not saying that is exactly what happens, but I always think that because deep down inside, uh, I think this is what's going on. But uh, these are what has happened for the institutions, and they grabbed it. Uh, that Bitcoin is worth 624 million. That they uh, the 13,000 Bitcoin. See, it says here on Friday a whopping 13,000 dollars of Bitcoin. I think it was 13,000 Bitcoin. Just saying. Anyhow, uh, that that 13,000 Bitcoin is worth 624 million, and they acquired it at 48,000 per coin, which it was a pretty good play because it was up to 58000 So they got a $10,000 flash sale. So good for those institutions. You know, we should stop really calling it smart money and just call it the manipulator money because that's what I think is going on. Anyhow, so this is all good news. Here's a nice little graph from CryptoQuant and shows what's going on. So really all this means is this. When we have a lot of outflow from these exchanges. Uh, if you're new to the, the crypto game, this is usually what it means. If they if they outflow it and they put it into cold storage, it means they're not going to sell it uh, anytime soon, and they just want to protect it and just keep it on. Uh, you know, they want to keep an eye on it uh, for whatever custody service that they have. So they don't want to put it on the actual exchanges, which is great. Now, when you start to see a massive inflow into these exchanges of cryptocurrency, just watch out because usually that means a lot of institutions are going to sell. So when it goes out, that means it's a bullish uh, indicator because they're not going to sell. And they're going to hold on to it. When it goes in, that means bad news because they're going to sell. So if you look at it and time it right, you could make a lot of great plays. I'm not a, 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 a uh, trader to say. I mean, I do it every so often, but with a very small amount of my portfolio because I like to gamble every so and <laughs> every so often. But for me, I'm just an investor. So when I see a dip, that's good for me because I go, great, I can buy it on a flash sale. And then when it goes up, great, my portfolio is up. It, it's, it's actually good either way for me. So that's what's going on in that section. Let me know what you think in the comments and let's move on to our next piece. So, oh, this was a big thing I want to talk about, which was this. You know how you know, it talks about Coinbase and I said it's kind of expensive. This was a pretty good uh, tweet from Digital Doji over on Twitter. And he took a look at if you bought one Bitcoin, here's how much it would cost. So the Bitcoin price when he did this, this was yesterday. It was at 47708 Here's the payment method. I guess he's got Alibank. Good for you. Uh, you purchase this much. But here's the Coinbase fee, 710 bucks. So you're paying uh, really 48419 So almost another, what, 800 bucks in there? And 47700 And then he compared that to buying it on uh, Voyager. So with Voyager, he goes, I want to buy one Bitcoin. Well, that's worth 47724. Uh, there was a little bit of a price of like $26, I guess. And that's how much you buy it for. So if you haven't gotten onto Voyager yet, I know there's a waiting list. I know it sucks, but if you can get into it, definitely do it because they are a brokerage. They go through different um, uh, exchanges to find you the best rate, kind of like hotels.com of crypto. And uh, it's what I use uh, almost pretty much exclusively now uh, to get all my crypto. And uh, that's what's going on. So let me entertain the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. IOHK. IOHK, development uh, arm of Cardano, introduced a new programming language, which is great. I mean, great, another programming language. Uh, I guess, you know, Haskell, just not enough. They're like, hey, let's do one more. Why do they do this and why is it important? I'm going to tell you why in a sec. So it can all be summed up in these couple paragraphs. There's a new programming language called Glow. It's going to be added to the Cardano's Ethereum virtual machine development network. Uh, it's designed to ease smart contract writing and deployment. Uh, the introduction of Glow will improve the development process and reduce its cost. 
New developers will be able to migrate to Cardano from other chains. That's big. Language is portable. It will be applied to other blockchain besides Ethereum and Cardano. As such, this release stresses IOHK's focus on cross-chain interoperability. So again, it's another example of Cardano making moves and making it very easy to write or as a developer to get onto their platform and just say, you want to code? You want to make a, a project? Just do it here. We'll make it super simple for you. If you ever think about anything that you've ever done in life, usually it's the path of least resistance. People don't like to work. Why would people, let me ask you this. Why would people want to work harder for the same results if they can just go someplace else and do it simpler? This is the thing in business. You have customers. They want this thing. You give them that thing. And that's pretty much it. So when I talk about Cardano and going up, I know some people like, Cardano can't keep going up and, uh, you know, it's going to fail and uh, it's uh, a lot of, you know, who's really building and developing on it? Well, they couldn't really develop on it too much because they haven't gotten the Gogan area. And now that they're there, now we'll see. Now this is where the rubber meets the road. Let's see if all that planning for all these years pays off. I don't know if it's going to. I got a good feeling. I invest in people. I like Charles, part of the Ethereum mafia, as I used to like to call it. So uh, we will see what happens. But again, making things easier for developers is a pretty great way to get them on your side. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. So not to leave out Ethereum, because I like to be balanced as much as I can, even though I'm super biased on this channel. I'll just be honest with you. I usually talk about the things that uh, I invest into, and uh, that's just the truth. So now you know. Uh, Ethereum update. Berlin hard fork. EIP 1559, ETH 2.0 beacon chain, first ETH ETF. So this is all great information if you want to read that. I'll link in the description. So there's some upgrades coming. Uh, EIP 2565, moderate expert gas cost, uh, simple subroutines for the EVM, gas cost increases for state access opcodes. That's good. Increase the, the rates. Type, type transaction envelope, optional access list. If you want to read all about that, great. I, bores me. Sorry. I almost fell asleep reading it myself. Uh, e 2.0 beacon chain validators. Um, let's see. No. This is pretty interesting. There are nearly 100,000 active validators. That's great. The more validators you have, the more decentralized your project can become. Uh, with around 3.19 million ETH, worth roughly 4 billion staked. That's great. But if you take a look at what's being staked on the Ethereum network, I want to say it's like between 3 and 4%, which is a good amount, right? Pretty good. As opposed to Cardano network, you're looking at 70%. There's 70% going up that's already staked in Cardano. Just saying. There is a difference, though. With Ethereum, when you stake it, it's there for the long haul. You're looking at six months, a year, maybe two years. No one really knows. And then uh, if you look at a Cardano, you can take it anytime you want to. And that's why if you go to danteacherscrypto.com and uh, click on the ADA staking, we have our own staking pool. DNews, there's a video of how to do it, how we compare, how easy it is, how much you'll make in the rewards, passive income. Uh, go check that out. There's a link in the description. Anyhow, this is the big thing I wanted to get to. The first Ethereum ETF. That's big, right? We, we like ETFs here. We hear about them all the time. Seems like they never happen, but here's one. So on Thursday, February 25th, CI Global Asset Management announced that it has filed and obtained a receipt for a preliminary prospectus in Canada for a CI Galaxy Ethereum ETF. Once it has been launched, it should be the first ETF in the world. So hasn't launched yet. They've got a prospectus. Looks like it might go through. Hopefully it goes through. That would probably be a big boom for Ethereum as far as an ETF. And uh, we'll see what happens. So Ethereum is making moves. Uh, nothing against it. I know I I, I, talk, I kind of poop a little bit on it. But uh, hey, make no mistake about it. They have the most developers right now uh, working on their on their network. They're doing great things. And uh, you know I own Ethereum. I own Cardano. I wish them all the best because that's good for me. Maybe you own the same thing. That's good for us. So yeah. Um, We'll see what happens as time goes on. And uh, that's it for today. So first of all, if you made it all the way in, hey, thanks. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, why don't you give it a thumbs up? That really help. Also consider subscribing because most of the things we talk about are time sensitive, like the news we just talked about today. And then uh, I'll link those two videos at the end so you can check them out on the left and right. Let YouTube do its magic. And that is all. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.